Hello, ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing? My name is Apostle Joseph Helen, and I'm coming to you live from Nairobi, Kenya. This is Professor TV, the table of heavenly contents. I'm here on this Monday evening to transform your finances. Of course, you know very well that every Monday we study about wisdom for finances. So I'm here to teach you from the Holy Word about how you can be rich, how you can be wealthy, and how you can make it financially, okay? So our topic for tonight is how to make money and increase wealth, how to make money and increase wealth. And this is called Kayel virtue. Kayel is the Hebrew word for virtue. Kayel virtue, okay? Now, um, please invite your friends and tell them the apostle of love is already online. And we apologize for starting late. I was doing a special video for our spiritual father, Prophet Shepherd Bushiri. Many of you know very well that he has been harassed by the judici judicial system of South Africa for a long time now. And when he left South Africa to his home country of Malawi, there's been a process that has been instituted to get him extradited to South Africa to face trumped up charges. And I repeat, trumped up charges. They're malicious charges. The man of God did not commit any of the offenses that he's being accused of. And after all, you are innocent until proved guilty. So the reason I started late is because I was doing a video in solidarity with our great man of God, Prophet Shepard Bushiri. I've told you very many times that I learned prophecy from Prophet Shepard Bushiri. And most of what I teach in prophecy are things he's taught me. So he's a great man when it comes to the prophetic. I don't know anyone else in the whole world who handles the prophetic the way he does. So he's a great gem, a great gift of God to our generation. And the church should wake up and pray. Remember, in the New Testament, they they killed James, who was the leader of the church. And when Herod saw that it pleased the Jews, he took Peter as well and locked him up. And the church woke up and the church prayed. And an angel delivered Peter from prison. And if the church were to start praying, instead of praying, you know, Churches now just pray. When they see a minister who's extremely successful, they pull the minister down. The minister is called names. You know, they refer to the minister as a devil worshiper, Illuminati, and all those things. Instead of praying for men and women of God that God has brought into our midst to help us. You see, this world is safe and secure because the ministers of God, those who carry the power of the Holy Spirit, hold back the holds and the forces of darkness. And when the devil wants to do crazy things like he's been planning world over, he tries to incarcerate or to lock up great men and women of God like Prophet Shepherd Bushiri. And we shall not accept it. We will pray, but we are also going to release our voices very loudly. And we're going to agitate until the man of God is free. I suffered similar treatment in my own country when... They decided to lock me up, accusing me of being a devil worshipper. <laughs> and I thought, which devil worshipper operates by the power of the Holy Spirit and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, which devil worshipper operates like that? Because for them, if you are rich, wealthy and young, then you must have made money from the devil. Because a lot of people in the church preach poverty. They think poverty is the same as humility. No, poverty is not humility. It's a curse. It's lack of knowledge. It's ignorance. And that's why on Mondays I teach you about money. I teach you about finances, okay? So that explains why we've started late. I've done the, the video and you'll be seeing the video on social media, okay? I'll be sending the video to my senior brother, Pastor Dennis Emojong of Embassy of God Ministries, Uganda, who will then send it to Major One. We must stand in solidarity with the ministers God has given us. Yeah. Many years ago, they locked up Prophet T.B. Joshua as well, but the Lord delivered him. Yeah. He was accused of 
dealing in drugs. You know, the things we ministers get accused of, crazy things. You know, I was once accused of those things too. In my country, I was accused of dealing in ivory, dealing in drugs, dealing in firearms. <laughs> I've never held a gun in my hand, I tell you. But I was accused of dealing in firearms. Can you believe it? You know? <laughs> and ivory. <laughs> Oh my, I think the only experience I've had with ivory is playing the piano because the piano keys were originally made of ivory, you know. <laughs> Jesus is wonderful. Imagine the Lord delivered me from all of it. And if he did it for me, he's going to do it for the great man of God. Okay, the process of hearing for extradition has already started and the man of God was in court today. But the proceedings were adjourned until Monday. So let's keep praying. All right, let me get on with the word of God. I can see Franz Weber is online. Daisy Quigga is online. I'm coming to you on my mobile phone today. Yeah, so many of you asked me that once in a while I should do mobile phone because you said that it's quite intimate. Yeah, and I agree with you. Once in a while, we put away all the big cameras and we just talk to you on the phone. Okay, so how to make money and increase wealth. How do you make money and how do you increase wealth? And this is called Chayel Virtue. Chayel is the same word for virtue. Okay, so let me take you straight to the scripture. So the Hebrew word for virtue is Chayel. The Hebrew word for virtue is Chayel, C-H-A-Y-I-L. Okay, and it means strength, might, efficiency, and wealth. So, Hayel means strength, might, efficiency, and wealth. Why does it start with strength and might? This is because to be rich and prosperous, you need to be strong and you need to have might. Okay, because the moment you start making money like this, enemies will surround you some who are envious, some who want to dupe you, others want to con you. Others want to rob you. Others want to kill you. <laughs> you see, the moment you start making money, you have to be a strong person and you must be a person of might. Now, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2 that the Spirit of the Lord will come upon us. Of course, he was talking about Jesus and anything true of Jesus is true of us as well. The Spirit of um, the Lord, the Spirit of understanding, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might. So might comes from the Holy Spirit, okay? The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So strength and might is found when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, and the, in fact, in our case, the Spirit of God doesn't come upon us, really. The Spirit of God enters in us by the Word of God. So when you got saved, the Spirit of God came and indwelt you. He entered your body. And became one with you okay so hayil means strength might it also means efficiency and wealth now i talked to you about efficiency last monday when i when i was taking you through the book of ecclesiastes 11 and ecclesiastes 9 11 the one that talks about the the race is not to the swift the battle is not to the strong remember those four things that we mentioned yeah speed strength okay understanding discernment and favor there were five things that you needed to have for you to be successful and then we added time and chance there and we defined time as an occurrence as an occasion as an experience and as fortune if you remember so whenever you have time to do something remember that's fortune it's an experience an occasion it is a fortune okay then we defined a chance as a meeting an encounter when you meet somebody, when you broker a go-between, that's what a chance is all about. So if you're in insurance and you're an insurance broker, you're actually using your time and you're using your chance to do your business. So efficiency is part and parcel of what we studied in the book of Ecclesiastes last Monday. So Chayil, C-H-A-Y-I-L, stands for strength, might, and strength and might is found when the Spirit of God fills you. And how do you activate strength and might? When you talk in tongues. When you begin to say, Librandi sele clonata labra cos peregista lacro bondi leda bundara satu lo clubri kida bantispa 
If you do that, if you do that for a whole hour, and you do that every single day for a whole hour, you become a person of might. The spirit of might rises from within you. The spirit of strength rises from within you. You'll find that even when you're physically feeling tired, you find you're refreshed again because talking in tongues, the Bible says, <laughs> brings you times of refreshing. When you talk in tongues, you become refreshed. It's as if you are in a desert land and somebody gives you cold, nice, cool water to drink. Okay? I can see my sister Nelly David is online. God bless you, my dear. Brian Mugeni Bula says we are making it. Oh, we are making it. Perio. Kayil. Glory to God. This is beautiful. Yes, we are making it. That's Mr. Bula, my son. Wonderful man. Jethan is online as well. He says he's watching and he's learning wisdom. So I want to teach you how to be successful, how to make money, and how to increase in wealth. So number one, you need to be strong. You need to have might. You must be emotionally strong. Because when you make money and you start living a certain lifestyle or living at a certain standard, people will talk badly about you. They'll say negative things about you. And if you're an emotional person whose emotions have not been sanctified by the word of God, you'll find yourself easily giving up. There are people who are meant to be extremely wealthy and rich, but they were afraid especially of what their family members said. So they decided to play the second string and decided to be just normal, average, and probably mediocre, yeah? But that's not your calling. You're called to be the head and not the tail, on top only and not the bottom, the first and not the last. Blessings must follow you and overtake you. That's your calling, okay? So, Kayil means strength, might, efficiency, and wealth, okay? So, how do you make money and how do you increase in wealth? First, you must know that in your spirit is wired something called Kayil, in your spirit is wired strength, might, efficiency, and wealth. So you say, I am strong, I have strength, I have might, yeah, I have efficiency, and I have wealth. You see, in the kingdom of God, to get something, you must confess that thing. But before you confess it, you must personalize it. You must make it yours, okay? The Bible says you call those things that be not as if they were in Romans chapter 4. That God, who calls those things that be not as if they were. So something might not be there, apparently, in your life, but with your mouth, you can create it. So when you say, I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, or in the strength of his might, yeah? I'm efficient and wealthy. When you say such things, you activate the chain reaction of provision so that you're connected to God's system of supply. If you say I'm broke, I don't have money, I don't have a job, I don't know what to do, that's exactly what you activate because death and life are in the power of the tongue. What you say is what you get as a spiritual being. All right, so when you have Chayel, you have strength of character, you have financial strength. And you have might in every single thing you do. You have efficiency in service delivery. And you'll also have wealth. That's what Kayil does to you. Now, where do we find this in the Holy Word? So you go to the book of Proverbs chapter 31 verse 10. This is the famous Proverbs that talks about the virtuous woman. So the Bible says, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. You know, I can preach on that for weeks or even months. Just that. Just that scripture, that verse. Who can find a virtuous woman? Now, the word virtuous is the word trans translated from Chayil. C-H-A-Y-I-L. Chayil. Okay? Who can find a virtuous or Chayil woman? This is a woman who makes money and increases in wealth. Okay? The Bible says her price is far above rubies. This woman has a price tag that is far above rubies. Are you getting that? Now, I taught you some time ago in Proverbs 18 verse 22 that he who finds a wife finds a good thing. And the word good there is T-O-B or tob. And it means a person who is good, a person who is pleasurable or pleasant, a person who is agreeable, a person who is high in when their value estimated so so when their value estimated they are high 
okay? They are high in estimation. Their value is high in estimation. So this is the woman we're talking about here. Her price is far above rubies. So if you estimate her value, then you find her value is higher than rubies. And remember that you are the bride of Christ. You are the woman. Think about that. The bride of Christ is feminine, all right? So your price is above rubies. You've got to say that. Remember, in our kingdom, we say things. After saying things, then we activate them. After activating them, we do. And when we do, we succeed in them. If you say something and you do it, and you say and do and say and do, you will always succeed. You get that? That's how children learn, by the way. They sing songs, merry go round and merry go round. As they say merry go round, they actually literally go round in circles. So they say and do, and that's how they end up learning languages so fast. Children learn things really quickly because they are practical. They will say it and they'll do it. Have you ever watched a little child play all by themselves? They talk. They even make, this is why cartoons were made. They watch children and they saw children animating toys. See, if a child has two sticks, the child will, will cause it as if this one stick is talking to this other stick. And they talk to each other and then, then it becomes an animated discourse or conversation. And this is where people who have the gift of media came up with the idea of creating cartoons for children because that's how children see things. They see things mostly in in first and second dimension, yeah, that's why most cartoons are not in, th in three dimensions, yeah, it's just like normal mathematics, algebra, geometry, actually, geometry is what I meant, yeah, right angles, you know, 45 degrees, 30 degrees, so children see things in one straight line, they don't see much color, they are able to see color, a lot more color as they grow, so that's the reason why children are subjected to primary colors, red, yellow blue and then of course you mix yellow and blue and you get green then you mix red and blue and you get purple you see so they're subjected to the colors of the rainbow which are actually a mixture of the primary colors you see so children see a lot of the bright colors but when the colors start becoming subtle they don't see them too well because their brains need to develop a bit more to decipher or to understand the color spectrum in fact, a lot of men still find it difficult understanding some colors. It took me a long time to separate, um, for example, uh, aquares, you know, these, this, this color that is bluish green. It took me a long time to differentiate that from green. <laughs> you see, especially, especially that ocean blue. Uh, I would always confuse blue with green for a while, but, you know, with practice, you get it. A lot of men don't know these things, by the way. Glory to Jesus. I can see Wesley Cheruch saying, Amen. That's a revelation, speaking in tongues. That's right. That's why the disciples of Jesus, after the upper room experience, spoke with other tongues. And when they did, you know what happened to them? They became so bold. At some point, Peter was running away from those who came to arrest Jesus. But when they started talking in tongues, Peter went to the very same guys who arrested Jesus and said, so whether it's, it's, it be good yeah, that, that we have healed this person who was born lame or not, it's really none of our business. Yeah? So whether you guys like it or not, it doesn't matter. We just have to preach the name of Jesus. Peter was so bold. He said, it's in the name of Jesus whom you crucified that this guy is now alive today and well, and he's been delivered from lameness. And these are the guys who arrested Jesus and crucified him. Peter was not afraid of them anymore. When you talk in tongues, you become bold. You're not afraid of anybody anymore. But this is where your strength and your might comes in as Hayil. And your efficiency and wealth talk tongues. Okay? Glory to God. God bless you, Wesley, and most welcome. All right, so let's carry on. So Proverbs 31 verse 10 says, Who can find a virtuous woman? Hayel. Her price is above, far above rubies. So the word T-O-B, Tob, in Proverbs 18 verse 22, stands for a person who is highly valuable in estimation. When you estimate their value, it's high. Now on Sunday, that was yesterday, I was talking to you about the fact that you need to increase your value so that you can interact with people who have money or people who are wealthy. If your value is low, 
any wealthy person will pay you according to your value. They will never give you anything beyond your value. Go to any tycoon and ask them for ten dollars. They won't give it to you. And you'll say, but look at you. Money is not a problem to you. Why are you not just giving me ten dollars? They will not give it to you. Because they look at you and they see your value. Yet someone else will show up. Yeah, they sit in a restaurant. The same tycoon will give them ten thousand US dollars just because they are friends. Yeah, because they looked at the person and saw that their value is worth ten thousand US dollars. Do you understand? So money comes your way based on your value, and I'm here to help you increase your value. And you do that by saying, "I'm strong in the Lord. I have the strength of the Lord. I have the spirit of might." I'm efficient and I have wealth. You have it first before you have it. Because what you have is what shall be given to you. What you don't have, that will be taken away from you. If you don't have money, the least you have called money will be taken away from you. Because your account reads no money. You see? So before you can become rich, you must have value. And value comes within you through knowledge. Value comes within you through experience. Remember, the definition of time is what value is. And we define time last time as an occasion, an occurrence. So if you create occasions, if you occur, and if you have an experience, okay, and if you have fortune, that's called time. Those four things become your value. So your value becomes higher than rubies, okay? Now, when the Spirit of God fills you, the Bible says, you will have wisdom. And the price of wisdom is above precious metals. And the Bible says, nothing you desire can be compared with it. So if you get the wisdom of God and you operate according to that wisdom and you talk according to that wisdom, then your value goes up and your value becomes higher than rubies. And I'm just going to explain to you uh, and just tell you how much a ring made of rubies costs. I'll tell you that a little later. So that you can see the least of what you wear on your finger, you are supposed to have money that is way beyond that. Your value and your price should be way above rubies. Okay? Now, the scripture, this scripture, Proverbs 31 verse 10, talks about the real woman. The one who is complete in everything because she has virtue. She has high yield. She understands her value. Okay, so she represents the church and she exemplifies what the church should be today. Glory to God. Is that what you are today? You can become that by confessing it. You see, you got saved by confessing it and you can also become prosperous and rich by confessing it. So God wants the church to be rich and influential so as to help establish the kingdom of God and to propagate the gospel of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. In fact, the Bible says, And all the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as waters cover the sea. So when you have virtue or high yield, your price or net worth will be above gemstones. And one of those gemstones is called a ruby. And these stones will also bow to you. One of these findings I'll teach you about the wisdom of dealing in precious metals or gemstones, okay? So if that is your forte, if that's your business, and I'll tell you what the Bible says about gemstones, okay? So I need you to realize that one carat of ruby, yeah, one carat of ruby costs 15,000 US dollars, one carat. Now it takes six carats of rubies to create one ring, a ring for the finger, a little thing like that. A ring like this, a ring like that, is six rubies okay that's ninety thousand us dollars now the bible says here that her price is above rubies so let's assume that the only rubies this woman is comparing her value with is a ring yeah it means in today's terminology she's above ninety thousand us dollars at any given moment that's not small money that's money that can transform you if you are a good business person. Her price is above rubies, 90,000 US dollars. Six carats of rubies, what is used to make a ring, a ruby ring, okay? Glory to Jesus. Now, virtue or hayel is powerful. 
This woman is rich. If you read Proverbs 31, the Bible says her, her family members don't lack anything. That even the husband has no want. And he's respected at the gate. For you to be respected at the gate, you need to be one of the richest people in the city. The gate is like parliament. The gate is like the presidency. The gate is like a place where important political and business decisions are made. And if one is respected there, it means they have enough money to fit in the ruling class. Remember, the Bible says that the rich rule over the poor. So those of you who are trying to get a poor person to be your president, it's not going to work because it's contrary to scripture. It's the rich that will rule. The rich will rule forever. So if you want to rule, please learn how to be rich. And that's what I'm doing now, teaching you how to be rich. Okay. Because the Bible says a poor man's wisdom is not heard. I taught you this last time. Even if he's wise, his wisdom is not heard. His wisdom is not taken seriously because he's poor. There's no way you can get somebody into state house or white house whose words are not taken seriously because they lack money. That's poor leadership. Your words must be taken seriously. But the interesting thing is that if you don't have money, nobody takes your words seriously. Even if you're screaming the best wisdom in the world. You see, that's the reason why no one takes your professor seriously except the students that sit before them every day. Your professors should be running their own universities, but they work in the university of a person who never even went to school. There are great business people who've started universities and they've employed professors mm -hmm. to teach there. Okay. And I've noticed that a lot of professors are poor because they know the theory of everything, mm -hmm. but they're not able to put a lot of things into practice. Mm -hmm. They usually know why things won't work. They rarely know why things should work. Yeah? That's the reason why when people finish their university education, they go out there looking for jobs and struggling because the professor couldn't give you the practice of making money, the practice of, of surviving in the market field, the practice of getting jobs. They taught you that if you get first class honors, somebody will employ you. And then you go for an interview and you find somebody who has a diploma and you have a master's degree. The one with the diploma gets the job and you're left out there and you wonder, so what's the purpose of these papers? Now, I'm not in any way demeaning academic qualifications. They are very significant, but there's something much more than academic qualifications that employers look for today and business people look for today. It is called talent. So a talented person who is trained is much better than a trained person who is not talented. Now, a, a trained person who is not talented, who is persistent, is much better than a talented person who is not persistent. Okay? So if you have talent and you're persistent and you're also trained, I'm telling you, you've got it made. I'm training you now, okay? Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I hope this is working for you. I hope it's helping you. I can see Franz Mepe say, I declare I'm above the values of rubies in Jesus' name. That's right. That's how you ought to talk. Giddy came out is online saying, hallelujah. God bless you. I love you guys. You're just amazing, aren't you? And the rest of you watching us, whose names I'm not seeing here, I thank God for you. This message is for your benefit. Glory to Jesus. Okay, so this woman's price above rubies. And one ring made of rubies is worth 90,000 US dollars because you need six carats of rubies to make a ring. 90,000 US dollars. So what if you want two rings? That's 180,000 US dollars. Think about that. Okay. Now, there's something about rubies. In the Morse scale, you know Morse scale, M-O-H-S? That is the scale that's used for measuring how strong metals are. More scale. So in the more scale, diamond is the strongest and it's at 10. It reads 10. But rubies read 9 in the more scale. M-O-H-S. That's the scale for measuring the strength of precious metals. And diamond has been found as, as the strongest. To be the strongest, followed by rubies at 9. So diamond is 10, the strongest. Number two to diamond is ruby. So that's strength. You see where the strength came from? Yeah. So virtue means strength, might, efficiency, and wealth. And ruby is the metal that the Spirit of God is using here is actually the second strongest after diamond. You see, reading nine in more scale. Okay. Now, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, 
This is how strong you are. See, that's what the Bible says. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. The Bible also says when you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. So the day of adversity will come, but don't faint. Conquer it because you're more than a conqueror. There's nothing too hard for you to conquer. When sickness comes, destroy the sickness. It will not destroy you. Be strong. Keep confessing I'm healed. Keep casting it out. You disease, get out of my body. Because my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. My body is not a pathological museum where the devil hangs all manner of his diseases. You cast the spirit out. You rebuke the sickness. You say, I'm strong. My body is strong. And then you get up and you begin to walk. Don't lie in bed. Even if you're feeling pain, get up. You're not going to die. This is how you fight. I remember my mom doing this when her heart would palpitate because of angina. And she would say, I'm not lying down. Sometimes she'd get up and she feels like she's about to black out. And she begins to talk in tongues and she fights. And I'm telling you, she fought that thing until that thing left her body. It took a number of years, but now she's perfect. Nothing wrong with her health whatsoever because she fought sometimes her heart is palpitating she's not able to eat something she's not able to sleep in the night she's hearing noises in her head she's even hearing her heart thumping so loud until she thought her heart is outside her body the whole system is numb and she thinks oh i'm passing out but you talk in tongues you rebuke the thing and she kept rebuking it until the thing learned to respect her. And the thing migrated from her body never to return. And to date, I'm telling you, she's in perfect health. Glory to Jesus. That's how you fight. It's called being strong. You're a ruby. You are nine in Moore's scale. M-O-H-S. Moore's. Moore's scale. Okay? You're number nine. Second to diamond. Glory to Jesus. You're strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. This virtue is also good for marriage. Okay? You get that? It enables you to dig deep into the world of finances and to emerge victorious. This virtue is good for marriage because this woman, the Bible says, her husband praises her and his heart safely trusts in her. So when you have virtue, your relationship will work come rain, come sunshine, come high waters or low waters, come streams or rivulets. Come rivers or tsunamis, your marriage stands strong. And a good thing is the one that is tested. If yours is not tested, then there's something wrong with its goodness. Hallelujah. You probably didn't find a good thing. Good things are always tested. That's why they qualify to be called good. You cannot qualify to be called good without a test. Glory to Jesus. Hmm. You get that? Thank you, Jesus. Now, I want you to understand that rubies that are classified as being way below the virtues of a child of God are used to manufacture finger rings. These rings are useful in marriage covenants. A person who has virtue will therefore not only have a strong marriage, but much more. You see, rubies are so strong, but you cannot use such strong metals to, to create a finger ring. You have to use the softer rubies, okay? And the softer ones, easy, easy to, to bend and to shape into a ring that can fit into somebody's finger. So even if you only had a little strength, the Bible says you have a little strength, but you've not forsaken my name. A little strength will still take you a long way. Glory to God. Okay, now, what is the color of rubies? The best, they're different colors, but the best rubies are a vivid crimson with a tinge of blue. A vivid crimson with a tinge of blue. Remember, the toughest rubies is number nine in more scale. Yeah. But the color of the best rubies is a vivid crimson. That is red, vivid red, with a tinge of blue. So it's it's almost purple because there's vivid red and a tinge of blue. And you, when you mix red and blue, you get uh, shades of purple. Okay. Depending on the amount of blue or the amount of red that you are putting together. Now, you know, red stands for the blood of Jesus. Red stands for redemption. And blue stands for sonship and riches. Okay? So, because it's a tinge of blue, and it's got vivid crimson, vivid crimson and a tinge of blue, 
This stands for redemption. Okay, and remember redemption happens using money. Silver is used for redemption. So redemption also is a sign of riches. And blue is a sign of sonship. Royalty wore blue. If you're a son of royalty, you wore blue, which meant you had no financial problems whatsoever. You are royalty. You're in the ruling class. Okay. So high yield that makes your price above rubies means your price above the best of all rubies. This one that is vivid crimson with a tinge of blue. This expensive metal that six carats of which are $90,000 worth. One carat is $15,000. One carat. Okay. Carat is supposed to be measurement of the preciousness of a, of, a piece of a metal. Yeah. The measurement of the preciousness. Yeah. Remember, there's a time I taught you about carrots, yeah? I taught you about different carrots of gold and all that. I think I'll revise that topic sometime next week. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, the thing about virtue is that it comes through fiery trials. There's no way you can be of virtue or above rubies without fiery trials. All precious metals must go through the fiery furnace. That's how they get purified. Fire purifies. So trials will purify you. Difficulties will purify you. Hardships will purify you. This is why I keep emphasizing that you should never be, you should never be bitter when negative things happen to you. Never be bitter. Because these things are supposed to purify you. I can see Nico Joshua is online. That's my brother. God bless you so much. Okay. When hardships come your way, God is purifying your character. Now, there are two things you can do. When tough times come your way, for example, people slander you, people abandon you, people reject you, people steal from you. When they lock you up the way they've been trying to do with Major One or the way they did with me many years ago. Actually, it was 10 years ago when they locked me up and accused me of all manner of things. When that happens, you don't be bitter because it's meant to purify you. It's meant to sharpen you. I remember I was talking to Mr. Franz Weber yesterday during our live broadcast and I was telling him that your family members will hurt you until you are so rich and so successful. They purify you. And after you start meeting their needs, they stop hurting you. <laughs> Glory to God. So they harass you until you become the best you're supposed to be. So rubies or any precious metals that you can ever talk about must be subjected to the fiery furnace. And fiery furnace stands for hardships, difficulties that come your way. Any difficulty that comes your way is for you to conquer. It's not supposed to conquer you. It's not supposed to knock you down. It's, supposed to, it's not supposed to kill you, including sickness. Sickness could be a difficulty that comes your way, but defeat it, conquer it, deal with it. You will, you're more than a conqueror. There's nothing that can defeat you. It doesn't matter how painful it is. You will overcome it. You will ultimately overcome it in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Let me carry on with this topic. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm teaching you about money, how to make money and how to increase in wealth. All right. It starts by raising your own value, by knowing who you are. Identity is very significant. Your confidence is based on knowing who you are. If you have identity crisis, you lack in confidence. When things don't go your way, you start losing confidence. You lose your cool and you probably walk out on a situation that needed your strength and your might. There are certain things that you need to efficiently conquer so that you can reach and appropriate your wealth. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, glory to God. First Peter 1 verse 7 says that the testing of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it is tried with fire, may result in praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So your faith will be tested. And it's more precious than gold. It's more precious than rubies. More precious than sil silver. It's more precious than precious metals. Just like Proverbs 31 verse 10 tells us that her price, this woman of virtue, you man of virtue, you woman of virtue, your price is above rubies. And the test that you go through the difficulties you go through, financial difficulties, physical health issues, relational problems, 
even your own issues, you know, you, you're dealing with faith matters and you have characteristic traits that could be flawed. You make certain mistakes. All those things combined are the fiery trials. They are supposed to leave you purified so that your values weigh above precious metals. Isn't that wonderful? Glory to Jesus. Now, in 2 Peter 1 verse 5, the Bible says, Besides this, make every effort to add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. Add to your faith virtue, strength of character, and to virtue knowledge. That means having got strength, might, efficiency, and wealth, increase your knowledge. Read books, go to the internet, study about business, study if you're a carpenter, study more about carpentry. You know, the modern ways of making chairs and making tables. If you are a nurse, keep studying. It's not always about the fact that you graduated 10 years ago. You should be much better today because of consistent and continuous study. I study the Bible all the time. I study business all the time. If, you, if I find a book, I want to sit down and read the entire book. I'm so hungry for knowledge. And that's why I'm able to talk to you like this. Do you realize, ladies and gentlemen, that I've been teaching you every single day, except for a few days that sometimes, for a reason or the other, you're not able to come to you live. And I probably think there are less than 10 days that we've not been able to come to you live. But in the last nine months, I've been coming to you live every single day of the week, teaching you the word. That means I must have studied very widely to have all these topics and to have all this knowledge to share with you. So add to your virtue knowledge. Add to the strength knowledge. Okay? Add knowledge. Read. Study. Don't just be street smart. Be also book smart. Read books. Information is found there. How to make money is found there. Read books written by rich people. Don't read books written by those who are complaining against rich people. Don't read books written by rebels. Rebels, apart from being poor, are always shot. They always die before their time. Show me one rebel that lived to tell their story. One rebel that lived to cuddle their great-grandchild. They rebelled against systems, thinking that that's the best way to change systems. You don't change a system by rebelling against it. When Jesus came to the face of the earth to change the worldly system, he first submitted to it. That's the reason why when they asked him, they asked Peter, does your master pay taxes? And Jesus asked them, show me a coin. And when they showed him a coin, he said, whose insignia is this? Whose superscription is this? Or inscription is this? And they said, it's Caesar's. And you know what Jesus said? He said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to the Lord what belongs to the Lord. He submitted first to Caesar. And that's how he was able to change the system. You change the system when you first submit to it. Then you enter into the system. Then you study the system. It's pros and cons. You do a sweat analysis, strength, weaknesses, opportunities and threats of the system. Then based on that knowledge, you can start changing the system. Somebody will say, what if the system corrupts you? Then your strength is small. You don't, you're not a person of virtue. You're not a person of strength and might, efficiency and wealth. You see, poor people are easy to corrupt. Rich people are not easy to corrupt. That's why... A rich person can get into politics and, and, and says, I'm not going to earn a salary. I don't need a salary because I've got enough money of my own. So th this is the reason why we don't bother you so much about money because we are blessed. Even though it is a biblical principle for people to give their tithes, their offerings, their first food and seed. It's a biblical principle to give. The Bible says, give to those who teach you the word of God. Share good things with them. The Bible says that the giving of the children of, the Israel, of Israel were meant for the benefit of the sons of Aaron. So the things the Israelites gave to the temple during Moses all belonged to the sons of Aaron, the tribe of Levi, or Levi, if you like. Remember Levi, the jeans company? One of the biggest jeans company, companies in the world is called Levi. Yeah? An American company. I'm telling you, Americans have invented such wonderful things for the purpose of helping humanity. The cowboys in the United States came up with this beautiful Levi uh, brand of jeans, I tell you. There are other brands now, but Levi was the most spectacular one even in its history. These are things I like to study. How people came up with certain businesses and, and how they became so successful. Why is that right now I'm wearing? Denim, yeah. 
You see, there's Levi, and there are many others, okay? I'm wearing denim right now. My jeans uh, are slightly distressed dem denim or ripped denim, yeah? All those things, if you study business wars, denim wars, you'll find them there, okay? So you need to be strong. You enter into the system to change it. That's why Jesus did not change the world from heaven. He came into the system, ate like people in the world, slept like people in the world, got tired physically like people of the world, yeah? Got angry like people of the world. He learned the system. The Bible says he learned obedience by the things he suffered, though he was a son. So you get into the system to change the system. You cannot change the system by rebelling against it. You might try, but somebody who's within the system will reap from your rebellion and death. So they shoot you, and once you, they shot you, somebody who has been studying the system takes over, even in politics. Look at the people that make it. They are people who are within the system, not people who are without the system. That's wisdom for you. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm actually done. I can see Francis Mwepe is doing exercises. <laughs> Hallelujah. Evelyn Kabar, my dear, God bless you. You can see you're right there. Uh, Franz, are you still doing those exercises? <laughs> Glory to God. Wesley says, my count is endowed with rubies. Wow, is it? Hallelujah. Now, you, your price is above rubies. You are way beyond rubies. Glory to Jesus. And you're going to make it in Jesus' mighty name. Okay, now, I've been teaching you for nine months, and I've not asked you to make donations. Now that I've invested in your life for nine months, that's how much time it takes for a baby to be born. So now you need to be birthed out. So I'd like you to start contributing or donating so that we continue making this ministry and these programs better and better for you, okay? So if you want to donate to us, then just go to josephhelen at gmail.com, josephhelen, my two names, at gmail.com, and then you go to PayPal and donate whatever you've got. Make your own mind about what you want to donate. And of course, blessings come upon the giver because the Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. I've been preaching to you for free. I've been preaching to you without asking anything from anybody for nine straight months. Now that I've invested in your life, the Bible says the one that teaches you the word, share good things with them. Okay? So this is not to make me rich because I already am rich and I thank God for that. But this is for your benefit because when the word is taught to you, the principle of scripture is that you also share with the one teaching you the word. Okay? Also remember that the ones who have much more is given to them. Those are principles of the kingdom of God. I'm a giver too. I give quite a lot. Every single week I'm giving. I'm giving. You know, my wife and I, we're giving thousands of dollars every single week. Ever giving, supporting ministry. Sometimes we do work for ministries worth millions of dollars. And we sometimes do the work for free ever giving, ever giving. So you got to get into that habit too. It's more blessed to give than to receive, okay? So, glory to Jesus. Are you getting that? So if you go to josephhelen at gmail.com, you can send your dollars there, okay? Any amount is fine. Even one dollar will do, okay? Never, ever underestimate, all right? Never underestimate the power of giving, even if it's small. There's a woman who gave only two pieces of silver, and Jesus applauded her. So whatever you can, get into the habit of losing money. Do you know why it's important to give? It's important to give because when you lose it, it can no longer control you. When money leaves you, it can no longer control you. When money is with you, it controls you. So cash flow is important. That money comes your way and also leaves you. So that when there is no money in your account, you don't cry. When there is money in your account, you don't become proud. The one who gives takes control over the thing that they give. Because they're not afraid to lose it. The one who is afraid to lose will be controlled by money. And the Bible says the love of money is the root cause of all evil. Okay? Apart from that, ladies and gentlemen, please subscribe to my new podcasts. I have 27 episodes out there already. We started two weeks ago. I'm on the 20, I think 28th episode right now. I just uploaded the 28th episode today. Uh, there is music uh, that I created many years ago that is anointed and that will help you most of it is jazz afro this afro that you know afro fusion some of it is jazz some of it's 
It's just a mixture of Afro, African music with Western music. And uh, you can enjoy the music too, all for free. And you can listen to wonderful teachings that I'm giving. Every single day, I give at least 20 minutes of a wonderful teaching, something to motivate you and to help you. So subscribe to the podcast. Click on to that little star there so that you can favorite it that way. It becomes easy for you to know when we upload a new episode. And then you share with your friends as well. And remember, uh, remember josephhelen at gmail.com. That's how you get to give to our PayPal account. Okay? You just go to PayPal, type the Gmail, uh, josephhelen at gmail.com, and then it will prompt you and you send your dollars. Okay? Glory to Jesus so that you're blessed. Hallelujah forevermore. And share this word with your friends too, so that they can be strong, so that they can have might, so that they can be efficient, so that they can be wealthy. Knowing that you have all these virtues within you will enable you to increase your money and to increase your wealth. Glory to God. Apart from that, seek knowledge on top of virtue. Read, study, know what's going on. Even cryptocurrency, keep studying about it every single day so that you become an expert in your field. Whatever field you are in, even if you graduated already, keep reading in that field. Keep increasing your knowledge. Keep reading, study books, buy them, you know, go to the internet. Anytime you see anything that has to do with knowledge in the area of your expertise, read so that you increase in knowledge and your virtue will carry you way beyond precious metals. All right, I love you so very much, you wonderful people. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll be teaching you on a beautiful topic. The, the topic will be about portals, heavenly portals, how you can see in the spiritual realm based on the portals, spiritual portals. So I'll be teaching you on spiritual portals tomorrow. I love you guys so very much. Have a wonderful time. Bye-bye.